The modern vacuum cleaner is a wonderful contraption. It's really quite magical the way it makes dirt vanish from completely inaccessible places. And before it was invented, houses were just much, much dirtier places, more like my workshop. Though even my workshop isn't usually quite as dirty as this. It may be a myth that vacuum cleaners are labour-saving devices. It's said that people spend just as long cleaning their houses today as they did a hundred years ago. But these machines certainly have made houses cleaner. Well, in this programme, I hope to look at exactly how vacuum cleaners work and how they evolved. Without vacuum cleaners, the only way to clean carpets and upholstery was to take them outside and beat them. an activity that was traditionally performed just once a year, the spring clean. There was considerable incentive to invent a cleaning machine, particularly because Victorian houses were so cluttered and full of soft furnishings. Numerous patents for sweeping and beating machines were taken out from the 1850s onwards, and some of these did include primitive suction devices. but the practical vacuum cleaner had to wait for the arrival of reasonably small and efficient power sources. By 1900, the first internal combustion engines had appeared, and amongst other things, they were used to power compressors to generate compressed air. Several Edwardians experimented cleaning carpets and upholstery with compressed air, but the problem was that the dust just went everywhere. and then settled back down exactly where it had come from. A demonstration of this rather inadequate cleaning system on cleaning railway carriages in St Pancras Station in 1901 was witnessed by an engineer called Herbert Cecil Booth. Booth was a civil engineer who designed bridges and the enormous big wheels popular at the turn of the century. This one was put up in Blackpool in 1896. It seemed obvious to Booth that sucking the dirt into a container through a filter would be a more sensible idea. And his very first experiment, holding a hanky over a sofa and sucking hard through it, left the hanky filthy and proved the principle to himself. His first machine was simply a cloth bag to collect the dirt and a suction pump. It worked well, but it was very large, so it had to be parked outside customers' houses. It became known as the Noisy Serpent, and he was frequently sued for frightening passing horses. The success of Booth's machine was largely due to the coronation of Edward VII in 1902. In all the preparations, it hadn't been noticed until the last minute that the carpets under the throne in Westminster Abbey were filthy. Booth's machine was the only effective way of cleaning the carpet without removing it. The king later heard of this and ordered a demonstration at Buckingham Palace, buying two machines. Your apparatus is frightfully impressive. Oh, thank you very much, sir, thank you very much. Booth added clear inspection tubes so people could watch the dirt being sucked in, and the machines became prime attractions at fashionable soirees. With royal patronage, the success of the machine was assured. A most marvellous modern invention. Mm -hmm. Booth's machine caught the public imagination, but was much too large and cumbersome for most homes, so various other manufacturers started introducing much smaller, hand-powered machines. This one's the sweeper back made in San Francisco, the British Queen, doesn't seem to be doing very much this one, a bit difficult to use too, uh, the star, <clears throat> this, one, this one feels more comfortable, just swept up a feather, and uh, What's this one called? The Reeves Pneumatic Broom. It doesn't sweep very much up at a time. Nearly got that bit of dirt. No. <clears throat> Most of these machines would have been considerably less effective than a simple dustpan and brush. But at the time, there was a phobia against dust that was believed to be full of germs. 
A French doctor in 1907 wrote, Dry sweeping and dusting are homicidal practices. They consist of taking dirt that has been lying on the floor and on the furniture, mixing it with the atmosphere and causing it to be inhaled by members of the household. In reality, it would be infinitely preferable to leave the dust alone where it was. Well, in reality, these machines were so ineffective, they probably did just that. This is uh, the daisy number two. Nice action, nice crank and bellows, but I don't actually think it's uh, getting anything off the carpet. And uh, this one is the uh, baby daisy. Oh, it's much bigger than the daisy number two. Um, slightly difficult coordinating all, both the actions at once. Doesn't seem to be doing too well either. Meanwhile, in America, a caretaker called Spangler had patented a portable vacuum cleaner powered by an electric motor. He sold the patent to a harness maker called Hoover, who was worried that his trade was falling as more people changed from riding horses to driving cars. Hoover was very successful and started producing machines in other countries, including Britain. In the carpet.